let's carry on building up our various constructions in this video. So in the previous video, we started building some of our very first FIAS type constructions with high R values for our building here and applying them. So we built a new FIAS wall and we added that to our building. So let's carry on by now configuring our roof and we'll take a look at the floor. And then lastly, we'll address the windows as well. So let's take a look at the, the roof first of all. So I'm back in my Rhino scene here in my material, my construction set portion. So this is where we were building out our wall. So this is our above grade wall. And if I want to build a roof, I can go through the same process. So I come up here to Honeybee Energy pH. I can grab one of these SD components and drop that onto the canvas here. I can give that a name. So I can call that Ed's BS Roof. And I'll drop that in, and then we'll give it a give it an a, a, either a U value, an R value, metric, IP doesn't matter, whatever you want to do. Let's say that this is going to be a pretty highly insulated. Let's say it's like an R50, an, a 50 R value in IP units. Uh, so again, this component here is expecting metric uh, watts per square meter to Kelvin U values, but we can give it R values in IP if we just say so. So just say what we're say what we're giving it. So here's our new roof. Um, so this one here, there we go. So there's our new roof, Ed's Fias roof. And we just take this roof and we'll give it to the roof. So the roof is now being set. So this exterior construction set has walls, roofs, and floors. We don't have any above grade exposed floors. This would be like if you had like a cantilever or of some sort and you had a floor that was exposed to the outdoor air. So we don't have any of that here. So let's not bother to build that. We don't want to clutter our scene up with a whole bunch of data that we don't need. Um, so we can just leave that one at the default uh, since we don't need to worry about it. Now, one other thing we can do here, anytime in Grasshopper that you see yourself building up a like a list of the same component and then sort of funneling them together and you get this kind of shape of like a like a sort of a V, um, to me, that's an indication that, you know, you could probably be doing this better. So how could we do this better? Rather than having a whole bunch of occupant uh, elements that sort of combine together, let's do this. Get rid of this. And this component here, if we give it a list of values instead of a single value, will actually create multiple components right out of the gate. So let's do this. I'm going to de de I'm going to disconnect this for just a second. Whoops. There we go. Uh, and then let's do this. I'm going to grab this. Say copy and I'm going to turn this into multi-line data so this is now a list of inputs I will paste this in all right so now we're going to build two different assemblies with two different names I'll do the same thing here I'll say multi-line data and I'll just retype it so 50 R I P. so rather than just building a single construction I can actually have this component build multiple constructions so what's it going to do? So I now have a list of constructions. I have Ed's exterior wall, and then I have Ed's Fias roof. So this component here can actually build multiple constructions at once. Now, how do I get the wall and assign it to wall and the roof and assign it to roof? Uh, we can do that by using a graft. So graft and then an explode. So the same way that we've been working with these components in previous uh, videos, we'll do this and let's do that move these guys over here and notice here on my top tree i end up with ed's wall and on my bottom tree i end up with ed's roof so the wall can connect to wall the roof can connect to roof and there we go so now we don't have a whole bunch of repetition of our components. Instead, we're going to build all the constructions in one component from a list of values and then just explode them apart. Put the, put the, put the wall to wall, the roof to, to roof, etc. We could do floor to floor if we had a third one as well. Just a little bit of grasshopper cleanup is all that is. All right, so there we go. Now, what about ground? So the next thing that we should do, so we've now set our, our wall and our roof. The other uh, main envelope surface, of course, is the ground context. So we have a, a floor slab sitting on the ground. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's come into Honeybee Energy. We'll come over to Basic Properties, and we'll grab a ground contact subset, the ground contact subset here. It's going to go to ground. And notice, just like exterior, it's got wall, roof, floor. 
So we can do basically the same thing, except this time, the only one that we really care about is floor. We don't have any below grade walls. We don't have any below grade roofs. We don't have any below grade floors, or excuse me, we only have one below grade floor. So, okay, so I'll come back to honeybee pH. I'll grab another SD component here. And in this case, I'll call this Ed's, um, what do we call this? Uh, slab on grade. So we'll call it slab on grade, and then we'll give it an R value. What do we want? R15, R uh, R20? Why not? Say, well, let's try R20. Just as a just as a starting point, right? This is the whole idea behind these SD components: is it allows you to really, really quickly build up or test some R values or U values without going through, you know, and building an entire assembly. Uh, we don't have to, we don't even know what this is. We don't know what these are built of yet. We don't know how this are put together. We're just trying to determine what the rough target R value is for for this climate, for this type of building, etc. All right, so uh, it looks like those are all applied. So those have been applied. Um, one thing that we could do, just very briefly, is double check, go to visualize. I'm in Honeybee, visualize, and let's just visualize by boundary condition. Let's just vi let's just double check that we do have a ground contact surface. All right, good. So the blue here is outdoor air. The brown is ground contact. So this component allows you to visualize by exposure, by boundary condition, basically. So, okay, good. Looks like everything's working. Looks like we have our ground contact surface there. So let's see what happens now. If we take this and we flow through, flow through, all of this is recalculating, of course, and we go to the end here, we rewrite our XML file out. Let's go here. So currently we're at 16.25. Notice here that our roof, let's just uh, take note of our roof. Our roof, well, I guess we don't see the breakdown. Total transmission losses are 43,000 kbtu per year. Let's see what they are once we update these R values. So I'll go to my desktop, grab the new file, say open. And let's see, we'll check first. We'll make sure we go to our roof, Ed's Fias roof, R50, uh, slab on grade, R20. Fius wall 25. Let's update our shading. Uh, and there we go. Now we're down to 9.85. So we're doing much better already. Let's go back to our case and come down here. All right. We're already doing really good, right? So our roof has, you know, an R50. We have minimized the heat loss there significantly. Better ground contact, better walls. It looks like our walls could still stand to do a little better, but let's let's see what happens. Uh, clearly, right now, the problem is our windows. So our windows are still uh, terrible. So if we go take a look at our windows, the out-of-the-box uh, is code-compliant window, not even in all jurisdictions, but uh, point 0.3 um, for a, a, a not very good window. So, okay, so this is definitely not the type of window that we want to use. So let's go back to Rhino and let's talk about setting up the windows. That's the other piece of the construction set that we would want to configure. So we'll go back, all the way back to the beginning and take a look at our construction set. So here's our construction set. We're building up our outdoor ambient air elements. We're building up our ground contact elements. And as I noted, of course, we also have this subface subset. So if I go to Honeybee Energy and I go to Basic Properties and I come here to subface, this will allow me to designate constructions for all the various windows and skylights, operable doors, glazed doors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? So we can set all of those values here using Honeybee constructions. Now, the one trick about this is that window constructions are a fair bit different than opaque constructions. And, and so we're going to have to build them a little bit differently. We're not going to use our SD opaque assemblies. These build opaque assemblies, but these would not be the right elements to use to build up window components. So we can, of course, at any time come into Honeybee, or excuse me, Honeybee Energy constructions, and we could build a window construction. And we could use the window construction we could use the window construction to specify the windows in our project. So why don't we do this? Why don't we say, we'll call this honeybee window. So we'll call this honeybee window. And the honeybee window is made of uh, different materials. So in constructions, we have the ability to make uh, window materials, glazing materials, frame materials, etc. So let's say window material. 
so we can make a new window material. This is the simplest way to make up a, a quick window, and we'll give it a U, a U factor. Uh, again, of course, all the honeybee stuff is always looking for metric U factors, so watts per square meter degree Kelvin. Um, in, in this case, we do have to input these values in metric because the honeybee components do not have the same um, uh, conversion features that the passwise components have. So we could put in a U factor for glazing of like, you know, 0 0.8. Uh, this would be watts per uh, square meter Kelvin. So that would be the U value of our glazing. And then we could give it a SHGC of, I don't know, 0 0.4 or something like that, 0 0.3, somewhere in that range. And as soon as we give it enough value, enough information, we make a window material. The window material gets passed along to the window, which gets part of the window construction, which flows through into our window here. So that then gets assigned to all of our various elements. So 0 0.8 is pretty good, but this, these components are really designed for NFRC window modeling. That's how they work best. That's how they're designed for. That's kind of how Energy Plus is imagining that you're going to input these things. Obviously, Windows in Passive House land, very, very different following the ISO protocol, not the NFRC protocol. So rather than a single value representing the window, what we actually want to do is build up the window from glazing and frame elements built uh, separately and then combined together uh, along with things like Psi install and Psi glazing edge values for the spacers and the installation. So while you can absolutely do this and it does work, it doesn't really give us all the data that we want for our passive house model. So let me go ahead and delete that. And let's instead go up here to Honeybee PH and let's go and take a look at how we build windows in Honeybee PH. So what you'll find here is that there are a few components in our Honeybee PH rollout that allow us to create glazing, frames, and windows using the ISO standard rather than the NFRC standard. So let's take a look at this one. So here's our create a passive house window construction. So this element here is going to create a new Honeybee construction, but it's a new, it's a different type of Honeybee construction. So this will get applied to our window here eventually once we once we build this up. And notice here that it's got different inputs for frames, glazing, and then some NFRC values. So this is going to be more like we're used to when it comes to windows in the uh, woofy passive in passive house modeling in general. So first of all, let's build our glazing. So we're, we're going to have some passive house glazing. And our passive house glazing, so we'll connect passive house glazing to passive house glazing. And let's give it, uh, let's give it a, um, well, I guess we should, first of all, we should give it a name. So we'll call this Ed's Bias Glazing. And uh, so that's our name. And then I guess we should name our overall construction as well. We'll call this Ed's Bias Window. Well, we'll just call it Ed's Bias Window for now. You could, you know, obviously make, call it whatever you want. Um, so we'll call it a, is there and then we need to give it some information so u factor and a g value um u factor uh again by default it's looking for watts per square meter kelvin but we can of course give it whatever number we want so if we want to say 0.11 u value ip so again u value in ip units we can do that these passive house components do accept ip values and do the conversion the honeybee ones do not so a little bit a little bit of just to just keep track of what's what um, but sometimes you'll be able to input uh ip values um, in in these components we should of course give it a g value as well so maybe like 0.34 this is center of glass uh, little g um uh, value. It's not quite the same thing as SHGC. It's kind of the same thing, um, but they're, you know, close, but not, not quite. In any event, here's our glazing and our glazing. Let's just make sure it worked. Yeah. So 0 0.11 got converted over to 0 0.6 watts per square meter degree Kelvin. Uh, get our G value coming through. So it's VS glazing. So we get our new glazing. There's our new glazing. So, okay, that's great. So we've got our passive house glazing. The other thing we want to build is a passive house frame. So if we come up here, we have a we have a, a build out here for a passive house frame. So whoops. So this guy here, let me grab this and drop this onto the canvas. So here's a passive house frame, and we can pass that through. Um, we do have it, uh, a default frame that gets created. Um, so we have a default frame here with you know not great values, a UF, UF value of one. This is all in metric again, so that's a. Uh, 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 watts per square meter Kelvin. Um, 
a width of 0.1 meters, so four inches or so, et cetera. So we can, of course, uh, fix all of that. We can make that uh, whatever we want it to be. Let me uh, reorganize just a little bit here. Let's give our frame a name. So I'll call this Ed's, whoops, what am I doing? Ed's Fias frame. So this will be our window type. So we'll have our Fias frame. And then what we would like to do is actually build out the individual frame elements. So notice here that we have an input for a top frame, a right frame, a bottom frame, and a left frame. We do not have to fill in all of these, but um, we can put in as many uh, or as few as we want. So uh, here's our uh, new component. This component here allows us to build what we call frame elements so the individual frame elements and then the frame elements can be assigned to one or more of these inputs um, by default if you assign it to the top the others uh, sort of inherit from it so as soon as you assign it to the top the others will match it so you don't actually have to assign all four of them you can mix and match you could make four different frame elements you know etc etc call this eds fias fias frame element and then we can give it some parameter values and this again should accept ip units as well so for instance if we want to call this uh five inches call it five now inches of course inches and feet are a little bit funny um there are lots of different ways that people write it so sometimes you'll people will write it in period sometimes no period sometimes uh people might do uh the double quote thing um and I believe, yeah, so this should be able to accommodate all of those different styles of writing. So for instance, five double quote, meaning inches, will convert over to point one, you know, uh, 120, 130 um, uh, millimeters, hopefully. Um, there's lots of different ways that people write inches and feet uh, with these kind of funny symbols. And so sometimes you might find places where it goes a little weird, but for the most part, the conversion should should work. Okay, fine. Um, and then our U value, what's a good U value for a, a frame? So maybe like, um, I don't even know what a U value for a frame would be in IP units, 0.25 U value IP. Um, let's take a look, let's see. As a representative value, let's see what that converts over to. Um, converting 0.25 to 1.4, so maybe that's a little pessimistic. Let's for a passbus, let's say 0.22 for the frame UF value, 1.2. Even that's maybe a little bit pessimistic. Uh, probably more like 1.1 or 1.0. Yeah, 1.13. So let's say let's use this as let's use these as uh, sort of design specifications, right? So we're we're again we're not modeling a specific. Uh, product yet we're still just testing out values you know how is our building going to perform with these specs and then we can go off and see if we can actually find a product that matches these specifications so, all right for consistency we'll just do product do that off so we've built up all of our windows here our windows are getting applied whoops our windows get applied here uh to the 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 uh, windows, let's go ahead and apply those as well to glass doors. We'll say use the same thing for any windows, any doors, and then that should flow through the entire model. So now if I print this out, let's see what happens. We print this out to Wolfy XML one more time. Come back over here. Say no. Go back to our desktop. Use the new version with the latest timestamp. And we'll recalculate shading one last time. And let's come into our windows and take a look. All right, here's Ed's Fias window with an average UW of 0.17. Notice the, our um, detailed values get preserved. So here's our glass U value of 0.11, SHGC of 0.34, etc. So, okay, so we've got our windows in now at this point. So we're getting much closer. Uh, but notice our heating energy demand is still 8.58 kV2 per square foot per year. And remember, our target is 8. So we're a little bit over the limit. So let's go back up to case. Now, what do we want to improve? So what else would we change in order to reduce our heating energy demand even more? Should we do an even better job with the windows? Should we insulate the roof even more? Should we go buy an even better ERV? Well, just looking at this graph right here and knowing what we know about the building, I'm gonna say that the easiest way for us to improve our performance is to 
go back to our exterior walls and insulate those a little bit more. So it looks to me like the out the exterior walls and the windows are the two main areas responsible for most of our heat loss. So if we can reduce those more, we can make a big impact on our total heating energy demand and maybe get us down below that 8 kbt per square foot per year threshold. We've already specified the windows, so we could maybe go back and respect the windows. We could buy it, see if we could get better glass, get a better frame. But let's first say, what if we went from R25 to R30? Let's just real quick try reducing the or improving the R value on our walls a little bit more. Go back over here. And so instead of R25, let's just change this to R30 and see if that's enough. Let's see if that's enough of a change to get us down below that heating energy demand limit. So I'll come back to Woofy, go open, go to desktop, they open this. Now, of course, I could have made this change right in Woofy, but um, there we go. Look at that. Just going from R25 to R30 was enough to get us down below our certification threshold. So winter energy balance, KBT per year. So we reduced the wall heat loss enough that this heating energy component was able to get down below the threshold value. We kept our, our gains mostly constant. So we kept our gains mostly constant. We focused almost all of our attention on reducing these losses. And notice now we're at 7.37 KBT per square foot per year, down below that eight target. Now we're not 100% done yet. We haven't fully modeled, you know, things like our, you know, if we have like a kitchen extract hood and there's some other bits that might still increase this number. Uh, but for now, based on what we know so far, it looks like what we've done to the envelope, our 30 walls, our 50 roof, 0.17 U-value windows, it looks like that was good enough to get our heating energy demand and our peak heating load down below those fierce targets. So at this point, I'm going to say that our envelope is in pretty good shape. I don't think we need to do anything else with our envelope here. I am going to just give this a quick name. I'll call this, uh, call this just to keep everything tidy, constructions, I'll call this constructions. And then um, I don't know why I did it to the left over there. Why don't we put all this, put all this here. There we go. Uh, there we go. Keep it all, not that it matters on the canvas, but um, here we go. So we've got our constructions. So our constructions flow into our geometry, spaces, schedules, et cetera, et cetera. So there's our, there's our full model so far. So all the bits and pieces here are all getting woven together. And at this point, we are looking like we're in pretty good shape. Now, our cooling demand is still too high, right? This is supposed to come down to 8.8, .8, and our cooling load is still too high. This is supposed to come down to 3.2 or something like that. And our source energy, our source energy is actually looking pretty good. Remember, we can't actually um, properly set this target value, but I think if we remember back to our, when we looked at the online calculator, I think our target was 4,750, something like that, um, kilowatt hours per person per year. So this is probably okay. So we need to come back in the next video and talk about cooling demand and cooling load, which I think means we'll probably need to finish modeling our building and get our shading built in to our Woofy Passive model. So I think we'll take a look at that in the next video.